honest and honorable practitioners of medicine. I would be anxious to join in such an effort. Regrettably, we don't do that. Today, we are dealing with legislation that cuts only in the area of health. No other area is cut. I find that distressing. And in their efforts to reconcile these matters, my colleagues have targeted health care and health care alone to cut. They propose Medicaid cuts that would risk the health of our most vulnerable population, including hundreds of thousands of children under the auspices of, quote, program integrity when CMS already allows for changes to ensure the vital programs such as Children's Health Insurance Program or CHIP to maintain integrity. And in the unfortunate case, we are seeing that we're cutting away at pieces of the Affordable Care Act, something which has already been enacted and which is already helping millions of Americans. By attempting to take away the funding for health insurance exchanges, my Republican colleagues are going to force the federal government to make decisions that should have been decided by individual states and which could be better decided by those states to address the, the special concerns that each of the several states happens to have. No one is going to benefit from this change, and we're going to find that the states are not able to do what they could very well do to meet the needs of their own constituents, while at the same time crafting plans and programs which are uniquely suited to the several states, something which the Republicans, to my vast distress, have spent considerable time complaining about. I'm also concerned about the rising cost of gasoline. Here we find we have two bills before us that will do nothing to address gas prices or to help consumers at the pump. At the Energy and Power Subcommittee markup last week, I noted that none of the rules or regulations to be studied by the new interagency committee created by the Gasoline Regulation Act have even been proposed by EPA. So we're going to have a large array of important officials in government dropping important business to study legislation or regulations that have never been issued, a most peculiar use of time and in a unique way, I think, of saving money. As, and as my colleagues know, I'm sure, that when EPA does propose a rule, other agencies and departments are afforded opportunity to submit comments during the interagency review process. And we are jumping clear through this when probably that kind of review process is going to get us the answers that we need. The state Strategic Petroleum Reserve Act causes me greater concern, and that is that all of a sudden, uh, as the majority staff has confirmed, major fish and wildlife refuges are going to all of a sudden be subject to oil and gas exploration under questions whose meaning or uh, actual impact we do not know. And this includes areas like the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, areas in the Great Lakes, the Chesapeake Bay, Florida Everglades, and other extremely sensitive environmental areas. These refuges have been set aside for the benefit of hunters, outdoorsmen, conservationists. They're of enormous importance to migratory birds and wildlife habitat. And believe it or not, they are bought in large part by the contributions of sportsmen who de deposit a $15 a uh, contribution in the migratory bird account each year as they buy their duck stamps. I cannot see why these kinds of changes can be made in the peculiar fashion in which they're made, when in fact we could come up with a much more harmonious and better result in other ways. I thank you for your recognition, Mr. Chairman. Yield back the balance of my time. Yield back. Chair would recognize the gentleman from Florida, Mr.